Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome to my brand new biochemistry playlist titled Clinical Biochemistry, where we only talk about diseases, clinical stuff, where I will not be wasting your time on the quote chair-like configuration of sugar or the elaborate chemical formula of hemiacetal versus hemiketal. We will talk diseases and the biochemistry behind them in brief so that you understand how we diagnose them and how we treat them better. Today we'll talk about a very important topic in diabetes which is sorbitol accumulation. Why sorbitol causes damage to the retina, to nerve fibers, and to the lens of the eye. I have three biochemistry playlists on this channel. The first one is about the basics. Then we have a very comprehensive one. And this one is just clinical. Diseases, baby. Your diet consists of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Carbohydrates are called carbohydrates because they are hydrated carbons. Glucose is a hexose. Glucose is monosaccharide. Monosaccharide derivatives include something called sugar alcohols, i.e. polyol. If it ends in ol, it has an alcohol group as in cholesterol, sorbitol, galactitol are sugar alcohols, i.e. polyols. So the glucose can become sorbitol and the galactose can become galactitol. So here is the formula. A sugar, specifically an aldose sugar, i.e. a sugar with an aldehyde group, by an aldose reductase, that sugar will be reduced into a polyol, such as sorbitol and galactitol. Is alcohol water-soluble or lipid-soluble? Water-soluble, of course. That's why some people can drink alcohol. So sorbitol is water soluble. Not only that, it is osmotically active. It can attract water. If I attract water to my normally clear lens, what's gonna happen? It will turn from translucent to opaque, and that's called cataract, the most common eye disease. Not counting the errors of refraction, like astigmatism, myopia, and hypermetropia. Some wisdom time. Diseases in medicine could be type 1 or type 2. You call them type 1 if the problem is in the ligand, and we call them type 2 if the problem is in the receptor. While many non-medical professionals criticize doctors for being non-creative, we just call it diabetes type 1 and diabetes type 2. Oh, that's just lazy. Doofus, it's about the ligand versus the receptor. It's a very sophisticated way of naming. Look, diabetes is type 1, a problem in the insulin itself. Or type 2, the insulin is fine. It's the receptor that's not working. How about diabetes insipidus? You can call type 1 the central one, which means there is no ADH. And type 2 is the nephrogenic one. There is ADH hormone, it's just the receptor is not working. The kidney is not listening. Same thing could be said about rickets, hemophilia, and others. So whether I have type 1 diabetes, no insulin, or type 2 diabetes, there is some insulin, it's just the receptor is not listening. Insulin resistance, glucose intolerance. What's going to happen? Glucose will accumulate because it cannot be utilized without insulin. By an aldose reductase, the glucose will become sorbitol. Reductase means reduction. When you add hydrogen, you are reducing your reactant. Where did you get the hydrogen from? From NADPH, which becometh NADP+. And this H will go to the glucose so that it becometh sorbitol. Osmotically active baby, which means it's gonna pull water into the lens, cataract, into my nerves, peripheral neuropathy, into the pericytes, which are cells around blood vessels, in the retina, and I get retinopathy. Diabetic patients have cataract, they have diabetic peripheral neuropathy, mostly sensory, and diabetic retinopathy starts non-proliferative, then becomes proliferative later. Remember this? If I have a disease inside the brain, what do you call that? Encephalitis. But that's more global, right? Yeah. What if it's more local in the brain tissue itself? Cerebritis. What it's, if it's a neat collection of pus? That's an abscess. What if it's inflammation of the meninges, the coverings of the brain and spinal cord? Meningitis. Notice the difference between meningitis and encephalitis. What if the disease is in the spinal cord? Myelopathy. If it's inflammation, myelitis. The word myelo means core. So we call the bone marrow myelo as in myelothesis and myelodysplasia because your bone marrow is in the core of the bone. And we call the spinal cord myelo because the spinal cord is in the core of your vertebral canal if you remember your anatomy. But what if the problem is in the nerve as it exits the spinal cord at the root? 
You call this a radiculopathy. But what if the problem is way far from here, like in the peripheral nerve itself? Peripheral neuropathy. Just like what happens in diabetes due to sorbitol accumulation plus other causes. Who else is gonna explain to you like this? Your woke professor with his PowerPoint? Give me a break. So if sorbitol is osmotically active and it causes damage, what about galactitol? That will be the topic of the next video. If you want to learn more about type 1 versus type 2 diabetes, diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome, calculating the dose of insulin, the different types of insulin, and much more, download my endocrine pharmacology course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. If you do not wish to download my premium courses and would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button and choose the highest tier to gain access to more than 300 premium videos right now. Please subscribe and hit the bell. Support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my notes, courses, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.